Welcome to the change mapping tutorial. The change mapping was created to give land managers, transportation planners, conservation groups, and the general public a way to visualize New Jersey's habitat connectivity puzzle and your place within it. This tutorial walks you through the change mapping tools, showing you how to navigate the map's layers and features so you can identify the best places to support habitat connectivity. As we go through this tutorial, we'll be using the basic navigation and visualization tools. Check out the user guides through these links for more details on those icons. You can find an area of interest several ways. First, just scroll around. Zoom in and out using the wheel on your mouse or with the zoom buttons in the upper left corner. You can pan around by simply clicking and dragging the screen. You can get to a specific location faster by typing an address or coordinates into the search bar. You can use the Query tool to search for a specific parcel or Habitat Core ID, or a more generalized area, like a county. Go back to a scale or area you were just looking at using the previous Extent button, or reset the map view to its original scale using the Home button. You can also zoom to your current location which can be very handy to look at habitat connectivity opportunities around you while you're in the field using the Change Web Viewer on your smartphone. Now let's check out the Change Mapping layers. You can follow along with the description of these layers in the About pane as we discuss them. In the Layers list, you will see two Change layers, one with separated layer components and one labeled Quick Draw. The Quick Draw layer, as its name suggests, loads quickly on your screen because all of the change layers are grouped together. The separated change layer, while slow to load, gives you the opportunity to view each component of change mapping on its own. But most of the time you'll want to just turn off the separate layers and use the Quick Draw version. Notice that the Change Quick Draw layer is grayed out at this map scale. Certain layers only become visible when you zoom in on the map, which we'll do now. And the Quick Draw layer appears. To view the change layers in context, you can select one of the imagery layers from the layer list or choose from one of the available base maps. You can adjust the transparency of the change layers and the other layers if you'd like to make them more or less see-through. Just click the ellipses and then Transparency. Let's slide the bar up to 25% so we can see more of the base map beneath. The change mapping is made up of cores, corridors, and road segments. Cores are large tracts of intact wildlife habitat. Click on one and you'll get a pop-up with information about that particular feature, including its ID number and acreage. Change corridors are smaller habitats that connect the larger cores in the most efficient way. The color gradient you see from light yellow to dark brown corresponds with a move cost category that predicts on a scale of 1 to 5, how easily wildlife can move through the habitat. Darker colors represent higher move cost categories, meaning that those areas may be more difficult or marginal for wildlife to travel through. For more info and suggestions on how to take action to conserve the cores and corridors in your area, including local and statewide resources, check out the Change Guidance document. The More Info link here takes you right to the section of Chapter 4 that offers guidance on land protection and habitat management and restoration. The change road segments are sections of road within cores and corridors that don't have urbanized area on either side, so in other words where road barrier mitigation would benefit wildlife by giving them safe passage between habitat on one side of the road and the other. Darker colored road segments are more severe barriers to wildlife movement. Since we're optimistic people, let's call these areas opportunities for conservation. Click on more info in this pop-up to go straight to the section of Chapter 4 in the guidance document that outlines effective road mitigation design and best management practices for different species groups.
The final component to the change mapping layers is the stepping stones. These are smaller areas of intact habitat within corridors that can serve as refuges for wildlife moving through or as live-in habitat for smaller, less mobile species. When all other factors are equal, you might prioritize a corridor with stepping stones over one without. There are many other layers in the layer list that can help you in your conservation planning, including parcel boundaries and municipalities, watersheds, vernal pools, and streams. You can also add your own geographical data to the map from online sources or from a file on your own computer. Some other important layers that might come in handy are the North Atlantic Aquatic Connectivity Collaborative Culvert Inventory, or NAC. The Road Wildlife Mitigation Projects, and the Preserved Lands Layers. Here we've turned on the NAC Culvert Inventory for Aquatic Wildlife Passage. There is also a similar layer for Terrestrial Wildlife Passage. Looking at the legend, you can see whether a culvert has been assessed by NAC and how severe a barrier it is to wildlife movement. This database is continuously being updated, but for those structures that have been assessed, you can find survey data and photographs by clicking More Info in the pop-up. The NAC layers are meant to pinpoint spots where wildlife movement may already be happening and spots where we have the opportunity to make it better. The Road Wildlife Mitigation Projects layer shows road passage projects for wildlife that are planned or already constructed and in the ground. This database is also being regularly updated. For each project, click on the links in the attachments to see photos and additional information. While viewing this layer, keep in mind that not all constructed projects have been evaluated for effectiveness, and not all were designed following change best practices for wildlife passage systems. Again, you can find those best practices in Chapter 4 of the Change Guidance document. Click on any change road segment to skip right to it. There are a few preserved lands layers that may help you in your planning, too. These layers show areas in New Jersey that are protected through local, state, federal, and private land trust ownership. We've also created layers showing those protected lands that have the most potential as wildlife habitat now and in the future. Unlike the preserved lands layers, these terrestrial wildlife habitat preserved lands filter out areas like ball fields that are not suitable for wildlife habitat. Now that we understand the primary layers and basic tools of the change mapping, Let's take a look at an example of how to use change in your wildlife conservation projects. Here, we have a habitat core that is being choked off from surrounding wildlife habitats, but there are several opportunities here for improving habitat connectivity. In this area, we have a planned, or in progress, road barrier mitigation project. The road segment bisecting this corridor is a severe barrier to wildlife movement a good spot to improve wildlife passage across this road. This particular location has multiple bridges over streams, so the plan here is to make it more appealing for wildlife to cross under the road rather than over it. For example, this overpass can be widened across the stream to include the natural stream bank plus dry passage for terrestrial wildlife through the structure. Fencing can be used to funnel wildlife through the new underpass from either side of the road. Looking back at the setting for this planned road mitigation project, we can see that the habitat in this corridor is not preserved. Targeting land acquisition within this corridor on both sides of the road will ensure that the habitat remains open for wildlife moving through, instead of being developed and therefore negating the benefit of the road barrier mitigation project. You can tell by the darker coloring and higher move cost category ranking that this corridor may be more difficult for wildlife to move through. But once this habitat is preserved, it can be restored and managed to allow wildlife to move more easily through this corridor. In this area, we can see some heavy development surrounding thin strips of corridor. Although pieces of these corridors are preserved, 
focusing on protecting the remaining forests and farmlands connecting the core wildlife habitats is essential for maintaining paths for wildlife movement. Once these areas are preserved, they can be managed to provide optimal habitat for wildlife to live in and move through. There are also severe road barriers through these corridors that will need to be addressed in order for wildlife to move safely through these corridors. When you have a map view that you'd like to save or share with others, you can print your map to one of several file types. The Share tool lets you copy and share a link that will bring viewers to the same location and scale as your current map, or to copy an embed code to use in your organization's website. Under Link Options, you can choose how you want your map displayed when people follow your link. For example, you can add a labeled marker on your map to note an important point. And you can have your active layers turn on automatically when viewers follow your link. Now that you're acquainted with the Change Mapping products, you are ready to incorporate wildlife habitat connectivity into your organization's goal and decision making. It's never too early to start. Remember to visit the Change website to find our full guidance document and various other resources to guide and support your connectivity efforts. There, you can also join our email list to get updates on change-related news. For more help with the Change Mapping tool, take a look at the user guides. And of course, feel free to contact the Change team with any questions. The actions we take now will determine what New Jersey's final landscape looks like and how much room is left for wildlife to roam. Thank you for being part of the change.